Hi, this is Kite. As always, your ever-vigilant host of Sly Cooper and Nathevious Raccoonus. And it's time for us to head out to Utah. We're all set to go to Mesa City! Mesa City, in particular. It had been a while since I'd been back in the U.S. Next up, the notorious mugshot. Ruthless muscle of the fiendish five. What he lacked in brains, he definitely made up for in brawn. Turns out he wasn't always that way. He grew up as the run of the litter. <laughs> a neighborhood weakling. The only friends he could turn to were usually found on the big screen. He was there that he spotted his first gangster, and he knew instantly that that's what he wanted to be. He spent the rest of his youth working real hard to get there, fueled on his dreams of great power and respect. With enough perspiration, he realized that dream. He'd become a hard-boiled, street-brawling, tough-as-nails gangster, ensuring that he never be kicked on or pushed around again. Mesa City, huh? I've always wanted to go to that thriving American boom town. They drove to Utah from Paris by going east. Well, either way, here we are in Utah, the ever canyon cavernous desert. And already we're being, uh, given a keep out sign. A nice large gate for the city. And we have to collect 40 clue bottles. Oh well. Why, I thought you said Mesa City was going to be loud and busy. This looks more like a ghost town. Something's happened. Where is everyone? I don't know, but it's starting to give me the creeps. What do you say we take off? And miss all the fun? Besides, I want to try out that new move I got from Raleigh's section of the Thievius Raccoonus. You mean the Ninja Spire Jump? Yeah. Do me a favor and read me the instructions again. To land up safely upon diminutive points, Liebeth lively impresseth the triggering device with the round geometrical object emblazoned upon it. So, jump and hit the circle button to land on narrow spots. That's a rough translation. So yes, basically, from this point on, we will be seeing this sort of obstacle, which we regard in much the same way as we do every other obstacle. We jump and press the circle button. We also introduce a variety of enemies in this level. Almost all the enemies, actually. In this case, we have ourselves a dog that happens to wield some sort of plank. You know what we're up for, guys? We're up for a bunch of gangster dogs, that's what. <laughs> Oddly enough, this is a weird enemy, and that's it's not actually bipedal. And I, uh, that's a strange mattress. I don't want anything to do with that mattress. <laughs> Landing on that barrel is a pain in my thigh. And rear, and just about everywhere else, because I always fall into the water. And occasionally I get stuck under that platform there, but oh well. This level has a lot of those types of platforms where it's just a... balance beam? Okay, I've never landed up there before, but eh. It's generally just a lot of seesaw-esque platforms made out of cars and leftover things left on the edges. What's with those flashy 
flashing lights. The latest in high-tech security. Electronic floor sensors. Step on them and you're a godder. Nice touch. They're safe to walk on while flashing, but it also means they're about to switch to a different sector. So yes, we have yet another form of security. Menace, it's just like the laser grid, except it's on the ground, only on the ground. It's generally coupled with various other forms of security devices, mostly spotlights, so that they can cover you from the ground and from above. And here we have ourselves a jailbird. Jail dog. A dog with a wrecking ball chain attached to his ankle. I'm not entirely sure what the term for that is. But here we have another type of enemy. Our typical ranged enemy for this level. He can only throw those cards, and he always throws them at the exact same time. There is no other pattern to them. Those dogs can rot off the cliff for all I care. Now this is a fun part right here. I often grab this, but I often do it in such a way that I put too much force into it and cause the car to flip almost entirely back. Since the car is forced to stay there, I have no choice but to fall off. More laser grids, coupled with laser floors, and water somehow. This is one freaky subway train. And after we deal ourselves with yet another poker guy, we can easily grab the key, or we can grab the rest of the clue bombs. Well, isn't that just the bee's knees? I'm missing four clue bottles. I guess we'll have to backtrack. Oh hey, there's one right there. And here are the other three. Gee, I sure did unintentionally plan this well, didn't I? Now we just have to somehow find the safe. I wonder where it is. Oh look, it's right up here. And what goodie will be awaiting us inside? Press the circle. Let's find out. A little bit of higher mathematics and voila! Dial in 314. <laughs> You've uncovered Rob McCooper's patented explosive hat technique. Use the triangle button to toss your cap. Then use the triangle button again to detonate it. Better back off to a safe distance. First. And so we present ourselves with a move that I hardly ever used, but is actually pretty useful. I never really found much of a use for any of these moves, actually, but outside of the roll, of course. But, in this case, this move is actually pretty useful if you're just trying to sneak past and play the game the way it's meant to be played. Either way, it unfortunately doesn't work in some cases, because it often requires you to get near an enemy and detonate it, as opposed to just throwing it somewhere useful. In other words, it's only really useful for enemies that move, unless you feel like getting hit. And unfortunately it does not work on treasure keys either.
Either way, we've been messing around in the broken subways and waters going up to Mugshot's turf. So let's actually check out what the, you know, the setup is of this guy, you know? Last time we were on a giant ship, maybe now we'll be in a pretty cool place. Oh, you know, maybe Mesa City is pretty neat. Okay then, I guess not. This mugshot certainly isn't shy. Okay, so we know he's here somewhere, but how are we supposed to find him? Mesa City is a big place. Given that he's a bulldog, it seems only reasonable to assume that he chose to live in a giant fire hydrant. That's some sound logic, Sly. Now you just need to find a way to break into the building's base. Oh, I'm sure I'll think of something. Well, it looks like we've got our, uh, obstacle for this level. And fortunately, this section here only has three levels to deal with. Two of which happen to be minigame levels. Cop? Jeez. What kind of insult is that to Sly? He's a thief, not a cop. There are two sides of... Not the same coin, more like two sides of a D100. Either way, next time we'll be going to the Boneyard Katia. The only platforming level. So, this is Kite. So long. Oh.